Um, developer tools. Okay. Um, the, the this is this really got interesting with with two things. Xcode Cloud is it really kind of blew me away, especially when I dug into it watching the State of the Union. So. Yes, Xcode, Xcode Cloud. Boy, man, let's say that 10 times fast. Um, th- they must have rehearsed this because uh, I'm having trouble with it. Xcode Cloud is a, uh, a allows you to collaborate for sure. And that's what it sounds like it is when you hear the name, or at least that's what I thought it was when I heard the name. It was some sort of cloud collaboration thing, and that's awesome. But that, and it, yes, it has that in there. However... That's not what Xcode Cloud is. What Xcode Cloud is, is you getting to leverage Apple's servers to build your apps and do all of your UI and unit testing and all of that without doing it on your computer and also without leaving Xcode. So you could and you can set all this stuff to happen as a developer. You know, you push a change and you can have it build on every push if you want. And my guess is because you're using Apple servers to do your builds that they're going to happen way faster than you could probably do them in your own offices. So one little piece of this that I, I puzzled about and I still don't know the answer to it. And this may be my lack of, of understanding of all these, the different pieces of this chain, but specifically it sounded like I could run tests on every single device that Apple makes and historically has still continues to support, not has ever made, but continues to support without my having to go out and buy 17 different iPhones and iPads and Macs. Am am I, did you you get that sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And you can set it to do those tests on every build or whenever you want it to, like you don't have to stop and say, Hey, go do these tests. And also if you have, they use an example uh, of, You know, when you have an intermittent bug, right, one that crashes sometimes, but not all the time, you can have it. I think by default, it runs a test until it hits a crash. You can have it run a test a hundred times. And if you get a crash, 50 percent of those, well, that gives you different information. Right. Right. And and you get full screenshots of it being tested on all devices in all different modes, portrait, landscape, dark mode, light mode, like it. I, I realize for us as users, we don't really care about this. However, knowing what it is like to be focusing on doing your development or doing anything that is immersive and then having to back out of that to do a build and wait for the build server and wait for your tests. And OK, it's all in the same computer. So now my CPU is like skyrocketing. I, I, I think this I, I, I think it's possible we may not be able to give this enough of a of a highlight to really show the difference that it's going to make long term. I think this is huge, huge, huge. But it's not my favorite thing of the developer tools, but, but go ahead and you say that because I know you got two on your list. Uh, okay, well, my second one was was Swift concurrency. Really, you don't have my f- number one thing on your list. That's, that's the beauty of oh, having I, three I of may us have here it on my list. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the beauty of having three of us here. Just and I know that's one of those the con- concurrency thing. It's just one of those things I've heard developers complain about the ones that say, I don't want to move to Swift because concurrency is a difficult thing to do. It's con it's convoluted. I want to be able to have stuff run on separate threads. And the examples that they showed in the state of the union made it very obvious that the whole multi-threading of Swift is, is brought yet more to a first class citizen, which I, I I'm hoping that the developers that were complaining about moving to Swift because of this actually now move to Swift and don't just find something else to complain about. I, I just wrote a big audio processing app in Swift. Mm. So all in, all of this is Swift. And I had to deal with a bunch of concurrency issues and, um, you know, dispatch queues and, yeah. you know, you, you, your mm-hmm. interface has to run on the main and all that stuff that, and I honestly, when I started, I really didn't know my way around all the different dispatch queues and what to use when and, you know, how to, how to set, really how to wrap things properly. Sure. Right? And so I ended up um, making a lot of mistakes and it's 
<laughs> testing can be re- with concurrence. It can be really difficult because it's hard to know what's, you know, suddenly. You know, why did that crashed. cause it to crash? It's right? not tied to a piece of user interface, right? You didn't push a button and it crashed. It was, you know, four processes running at the same time. And they, ha- you know, sometimes they would run into each other and sometimes they wouldn't. So I love this concurrency it, it, to make, to simplify it because it, it really is some really naughty code. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But it wasn't my favorite thing. What was your That's favorite why thing, I man? always like oh, go ahead, writing embedded code because typically embedded code is single threaded. Well, wow. right, right. Multi-threaded code, you, you, the the possibility for disaster grows exponentially, as I'm sure you've found. Because oh, now I got to keep track of a hundred things happening at once versus one. <laughs> So, then again, having multiple cores and being able to do multiple things at once is cool as long as it's managed properly. Well, we, so, we as users like apps that run with concurrency as developers, oh, as developers, we like the simplicity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'm John, you. you're, you, I'm waiting for that other shoe to drop. What's the what's the other thing you were? Gonna- um, I think they mentioned something about being able to develop apps on the uh, iOS device. <laughs> I think you've got it. Not well, almost <laughs> not on iOS, but on iPad OS or iPad OS. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Playgrounds, playgrounds and iPad OS are now the, I've been saying this for so long that, um, that, that the iPad will never be my main machine until I can build an app and put it on the app store with that machine. Because mm-hmm. if I have to, if I have to go back to Mac OS and write all my code, in Mac, OS, you know, all that stuff, then my, I might as well just work on my Mac. And now I'm like, ha, ah, wow. Playgrounds on, on an iPad, which you've always had playgrounds on an iPad, right. but playgrounds on an iPad where you can, without touching a Mac, you can hit submit and put your app on the app store. That's amazing. I think that's gigantic. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. It, no, you're you're right. It it it's it is bigger than concurrency, for sure, because it opens the door for so many people in so many different ways. Yeah. And yeah, I, mean, ju- I really wasn't judging the, the relative merits of them. I just did, I just wanted to include that one. Of course. Yeah, that's why that's why we're all here. Yeah. Yeah, no, the um d- 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 for clarity, you can build iOS and iPad OS apps with Swift Playgrounds on iPad. So you can't build Mac OS apps yeah. uh, in Swift Playgrounds on iPad. Yet. Well, yeah, yet. Yet. Yeah, fair. Although it'd be- you're going to be able to build an app. Yeah. I, I, I would almost guarantee this. You're going to build an app. It's going to it's going to be buildable on on an iPad. You're going to build it in Swift UI in a, some future version of Swift UI. Yeah. And it's going to have all it's going to have all the Mac elements you need to build an app that maybe won't run as natively or as pretty or as perfectly yeah. as your Mac apps run, but that it'll run on a Mac and someone who wasn't sophisticated would run it and think it was a built in a native Mac app. Yeah. I, I believe that's true. I believe it's coming eventually. If not, you know, next year, maybe the year after. Yeah. Fair. Right. Fair. 